the National Farmers Organization, the organization that woke America and represents the leadership of agriculture, presents U.S. Farm Report, a public information program brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this area and others interested in having farmers receive cost of production plus a reasonable profit. The National Farmers Organization, pioneer of collective bargaining, the marketing system to meet the needs of the 20th century. U.S. Farm Report now presents Fair Prices for Dairy with Alban Rust, Hillsdale, Wisconsin, head of the National Dairy Commodity Department for the National Farmers Organization. Mr. Rust is a dairy farmer and highly experienced in working with farm groups, dairy marketing groups, and farm organizations. And Oris Canerva, a farmer who was born in Virginia, Minnesota. He was educated in Finland and now serves on the NFO National Board from Minnesota, an assistant in the Dairy Commodity Department. And Dave Zigweed, a young outstanding dairy farmer from Arcadia, Wisconsin, and he is also an assistant and the Dairy Commodity Department. Here now is your U.S. Farm Reporter. Thank you. I'm Don Mack, and before we start in the questioning to these gentlemen about dairy and the dairy industry, I would like to ask each one of them for a brief opening statement. A statement concerning the importance of dairy to our economy and society. I'd like to start first with Mr. Alvin Rust. Alvin, what does the dairy industry mean to the economy and our society? Basically, Don, the dairy industry is probably one of the most important farm products uh, that is being produced today. Every man, woman, and child must drink milk. This being the case, there is no product or no other commodity that can replace the elements that the dairy farmer does produce to have a healthy nation. Thank you. The next gentleman, Mr. Oris Kinerva, could we have your opening statements, please? Yes, Don. The dairy industry is a major component of total agricultural income in these United States. The total income at the farm level in the year 66 was five and a half billion dollars, which alone accounts for one-sixth of the total farm income. This does not include income other than from milk, which is substantial. The milk portion alone, to repeat, was $5.5 billion. Thank you. Third guest is Mr. David Zigweed, a young dairy farmer himself. Dave? Well, Don, we hear an awful lot of what the dairy industry has as far as impact on the national level. This is certainly true. What I would like to do is to bring it down more to the local level, such as my own area or my own hometown. We have 70 dairy farmers in my own township in Buffalo County, Wisconsin. Just a two cent a quart increase would bring at least $250,000 a year into the cash registers of the businessmen in my hometown. On the county level, this would be three to four million dollars. If four townships serve the Arcadia area, which is my hometown, at $250,000 per Township, this is one million dollars. We have a hundred businessmen in my town. This would be an average of ten thousand dollars more in each businessman's cash register at the end of the year if the farmers were receiving two cents a quart more. It would also reverse the trend of losing our basic industry, which is happening across the country, it is happening in my home township. Well, you're probably one of the youngest farmers in your home community and entering into the dairy field i'd like to ask you uh, another question if i may uh, since you joined the national farmers organization what was one of your reasons on going in with your neighbors cooperating and why did you actually join the national farmers organization well don i suppose i was a average young dairyman i started out Investing in the dairy business as heavily as I have, we did everything we could to increase our production. When we had our production to the point where we were above average, our income wasn't there. At this point, you look about to do something. As an individual, you can't do anything. 
This is where organization comes into the picture after investigating the NFO dairy program and the NFO program in general, I could see that it offered me a chance to get together with my neighbors in my county across the nation. The only chance, the only organization that was actually working on price. This is why I joined. Well, my next question, I have in the explanation here, I'd like to point out and have you answer. This was on a front cover of one of the nationally known publications the Farm Temple Magazine, which is a, a magazine dedicated for the rural communities and for the farmers. It publishes uh, writings by congressmen, church people, and agricultural leaders. And as you see here on the front cover, it has a quart of beer, which they have labeled the price at 80 cents. Over on the other across the front page is one quart of milk, which at this time when this was published uh, this year, the average uh, one quart of milk was 25 cents. I think probably the big letters why. Actually, why is there such a great difference from a commodity that is needed for every human being to supply the minerals and vitamins that we need for the body as compared to a quart of uh, pop or a quart of beer? Could you ask, answer this why? Is there such a, a variation between the price? Well, basically, people always seem to pay more for a non-essential item that isn't absolutely needed than they do for an item such as a quart of milk that is needed and is very healthful. I don't know, probably this seems to be true, beer at 80 cents a quart, soft drinks at 50 to 60 cents a quart. I do think that one thing this picture points out, we need a much better job of pricing our products as far as dairy farmers are concerned. Well, Mr. Zigweed, I think you've probably established one thing, that the dairy farmers are not getting paid enough for what they produce and the commodities that are so vital to our economy. And this leads into a question that I'd like to ask the head of the Dairy Commodity Department at this time, Mr. Rust. What would you say is the number one problem in the dairy industry today? Don, the number one problem, seems to me, is the very fact that the American dairy farmer does not receive a reasonable income. We've often heard other groups and governmental agencies, speakers of all types, talk about the many, many problems the dairy farmer has. I would agree that they have problems, but I think the number one problem is a price. After all, no one can work or produce without a reasonable price and a reasonable profit. The second thing that I see has to be changed is the fact that the American dairy farmer has in the past 20 years lived pretty much as an individual He's been told that as long as he stays an American farmer that he can stay an individual and this is the way he should live. But basically it is not true. Everything he buys is produced by either large corporate companies or well-organized groups one way or another. So secondly, I think his second problem is that he has been an unorganized man. Mr. Kenerva, you've been a farmer all your life, and ever since the year of 1959 to 1960, the statistics show that every week an average of 200, or I should say 2,500 farmers, now this is including all farmers, have left their livelihood to the farming because of, due to low farm prices. In other words, this means 350 farmers per week have left the farm, or one farmer every four minutes. For example, from the time that we've been on the air here, probably approximately two farmers have moved off the farm due to this short of in earned income. Now, uh, I would like to ask you, what is some of the uh, solutions that uh, can be corrected to this problem to get this income back to the dairy farmers? Well, Mr. Rust led uh to right up to the way that this problem can be solved. 
we all recognize the problem as being that of a price which is too low to return cost of production and a profit. Consequently, we then, following up the idea, realize that this is because of lack of organization on the part of the farmer. I'd like to use this illustration here to show what organized farmers could do. This is headed loose ball. The loose ball being the answer to the question, who is going to control farming? We have in the picture government, investors, suppliers, processors, other groups, and right in the front, leading the pack, the man that apparently and obviously is going to get the ball, is the organized farmer. Now, the unorganized, or the farmer that does not belong to a collective bargaining group, is not even on the scene. It's apparent, and I believe this drives it home real well, there's only one man that's going to solve the problem, and that is the organized farmer. We in the NFO believe in organization, and we believe that collective bargaining can be applied to dairy farming in such a manner that those of us who are still engaged in dairying can return a fair and reasonable profit in our operations and can do so and retain our identity as individual businessmen, but that we can only do it through a collective bargaining program, that one proposed by the National Farmers Organization. Now you mentioned collective bargaining, and the collective bargaining program uh, which the National Farmers Organization has been occupying ever since uh, they went into this field. And Mr. Rust, I'd like to ask you this question now. Just what exactly is collective bargaining? Collective bargaining is a fairly simple thing if people will take the time to understand it. There's been laws established in the nation so that every minority group, if you would put it in that term, could band together under one law or the other and apply collective bargaining to their problem. In this sense, the farmer can do the same thing. They've established a Wagner Act for labor. Uh, Congress has also established the Captor Volstead Act for farmers, which legalizes them to do identically the same things that collective bargaining groups do in any other field. So the farmer has today, and has had for 40 years, the necessary laws so that he could organize and price his production if he first organized. So collective bargaining is one of those things of where we can all work together on a specific project or problem. We can act in sequence as though one owned all the product and sell it in this manner, and by doing this, compete successfully with the large national dairy groups that do ultimately receive the farmer's production and perform sales of it to the consumers. So collective bargaining is a way and means of where farmers' voice can be heard right from the farm level into the structure that would operate the program and this same voice can be applied to the buyers of his production and in this sense bring about uh, change in farm marketing straight across the board, whether it would be dairy products, meat, or grain, makes no difference. The law applies to all of them. So collective bargaining seems to us in NFO as about the only answer left. We've had all kinds of programs as farmers. We've built one association after the other. We've built small marketing groups from one end of the nation to the other, especially on dairy. None of these things have brought about any changes. We've sat static for 20 years on the same prices we were receiving. There has been nothing on the farm front 
with the exception of NFO, its collective bargaining program to give the farmer a way and means of crawling out of the situation that basically politicians, large buyers, and other groups have put him into today. And Don, uh, collective bargaining in this sense doesn't take away any individual rights from any farmer. It's absolutely on the contrary side of that one. It establishes the right for him to do as others do instead of others telling him what he should do. So it is a good all-around American program. The National Farmers Organization started, I believe, collective bargaining for meat and livestock. When did they start uh, the origin of the collective bargaining program for dairy and the dairy products? And why did they decide to go into this field for the field and area of dairy? NFO went into the dairy field namely because there were no other groups willing to take on the job. NFO, to begin with, was a farm organization that did spring up in basically grain and meat areas, but the group heading up the organization well understood the dairy problem and therefore decided that this should be taken in in their overall program. So in setting up the dairy program, NFO did offer the processing industry an opportunity to do what NFO finally suggested as a program and said if this can be accomplished on a talking basis, we'll not have to spend the time organizing the producer. The job can be done strictly from the processing level through the local cooperatives. If you marketing groups, as we saw them at that time, would go ahead. Such a marketing structure could establish prices, handle surplus production, and get away from the government support program as a basic farm program. Our marketing groups in dairies turned down this offer, and at this point, NFO did move into the heavy milk producing areas, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, North, South Dakota, New York, and so on, and started organizing the dairy for farmer so that his income could be adjusted along with other mm -hmm. farm groups. Turning now to the point on holding actions, mm -hmm. the milk holding action that the National Farmers Organization had and took place last uh, part of March of this year, uh, this was probably one of the largest and most spectacular organization actions of all history of the farmers all across the United States. It brought not only nationwide coverage in telling the plight of the dairy farmers, but the story on what is happening to all farmers. And Mr. Kenerva, I'd like to turn to you now concerning the uh, holding actions. What uh, is probably one of the most misunderstood part of the holding action, or for example, uh, some terms uh, that they like to use is the pricing action. I mean, this is a term that the businessman uses on Main Street uh, to put a price tag on his products. He calls it a pricing action. Uh, what uh, would you say that is the most misunderstood part of the NFO holding action? The holding action itself is uh, the most misunderstood, Don. Uh, we in the agricultural, on the agricultural scene have throughout the ages been living under what we call the law of supply and demand, or we could abbreviate that and call it LSD, <laughs> which today perhaps carries a little different connotation. The law of supply and demand is what we are supposedly operating under. However, we find that in today's organized economy, People are establishing prices on products, prices which will return the cost of production, and they back these demands up by the statement, I will not sell for less than this price. This is all that we in the National Farmers Organization propose with a holding action. It's merely a pricing action. We do not intend to, nor do we intend to through even the remotest suggestion, 
force the law of supply and demand to work in our behalf by running the nation out of food. Uh, this would be quite an overpowering undertaking, but we can make our bargaining power felt to the processing industry and to the consumer through a holding action. Now, we want to make this point clear that this is not an attempt to create such a tremendous shortage on the market that the price would climb. Certainly, it could have this effect to some extent, but the objective is to bring about the awareness of the need for a contractual approach to the sale of farm commodities and to make the processing industry realize that we control a large enough volume that they will have to do business with us. This milk holding action that we held the last two weeks of March was, as you said, Don, one of the most spectacular organized farm efforts ever put forth by farmers in the United States, and I want to add organized farmers. It did a number of things. Four major points, really, were reached through the use of this holding action. Number one, as Don already mentioned, it focused attention on the dairy farmers' problems and the need for better prices. These things were known, but they were not dramatized, nor were they recognized by the general public and, above all, the processing industry until the NFO had the holding action. It brought public acceptance to the NFO, first and foremost, and in connection with this, it brought the word collective bargaining into common use, that is, collective bargaining for agriculture. Today, you hear everybody talking about collective bargaining for agriculture, which uh, certainly, Don, is a subject in itself. Uh, I don't intend to get on it. But we gain public acceptance. This is point number two. Number three, and these are extremely significant from the standpoint of dairy prices, as a result of the milk holding action, there were held in emergency milk order hearings, and in these market order hearings, seasonal price drops were stopped. Prices that normally decline for the summer remained stable, and the Department of Agriculture added a 20 cent per hundred weight price increase to the price of class one milk, which is a significant gain if you consider the fact that the seasonal drops did not take place. Of greater importance, although a little slower in coming, was the result of the forming of a marketing agency in common, as mentioned by Mr. Rust here. Uh, this marketing agency in common is the result of the cooperative dairy industry finally starting to realize that there is a need for unification of the power represented by the individual cooperatives they have formed two marketing agencies. There are perhaps three or four in existence today. One of these marketing agencies has gone out uh, to pursue a very, uh, you might say, militant type of bargaining effort and has bargained for and is today collecting 50 cents a hundredweight over and above federal market order prices for its members in many of the Midwest milk market order areas. This adds up to a total of 70 cents, clear increase for the class one industry, milk industry, totally attributable to the NFO milk holding action. A fourth point that I want to bring in here, Don, is the curtailment of dairy imports. Dairy imports threatened to climb to the level of 5.5 billion pounds fluid milk equivalent that is brought in here in the form of cheese and uh, sugar butter mixtures. These were curtailed on the 1st of July and are now held down to the level of 1.1 billion. Now these are four major points, Don, that we know of a certainty that are the result of our milk holding action. The results that we now are seeing are not quite as flamboyant as these, but we continue to get additional results in the form of more and more membership and more and more people starting to realize that our program is a must. Turning now to the youngest member on the panel here, Mr. David <coughs> Zigweed. Uh, you're a young farmer. Uh, what does the future hold for the dairy farmers as you see it, as keeping the young farmers on the farm, not only uh, farming, but active in producing the dairy commodities? Well, Don, 
I would say for organized farmers, the future looks very bright. For unorganized farmers, the future looks very grim and very limited. In my area, and generally speaking across the country, the average age of the farmers is climbing near the 60-year mark. These people don't have very long to farm. Any young man starting out is going to pay 7% interest for the money he borrows. The return is 3 to 4%. Anyone can see at a glance that it'll be very difficult for very many young farmers to get started. Also in my hometown, four out of five of the graduates of my local high school leave the town and wind up in the big cities in a very short time. This in itself is the evidence of the drain of our resources, particularly human resources, that is taking place. <clears throat> Thank you, Dave. Another question that I'd like to uh, point out to you is uh, just we're running short here on time. If you could uh, give me just a brief, short uh, answer to it. Uh, what do you see that fair prices to the dairy farmers can do, not only to the uh, economy, but to also help the consumer? Well, I think the biggest thing it would do would be to ensure an adequate supply of milk. The supply of milk has been dropping nationally. It would begin to reverse the trend of the young people leaving, more of them investing in farming and taking it up as their livelihood. Also putting them on a plane where they can earn an equal amount to young men their age and other walks of life. Another short question, uh, do you plan on uh, going uh, and staying on the farm the rest of your life? Well, is this what you would like to uh, uh, make your ambition and your livelihood? Well, Don, I've always liked living in the country. I still do. Presently, I am working with NFO. I think it pretty much depends on whether we are completely successful, where we can earn a fair return compared to other young people. If this case doesn't come about, I think I will be looking for a different occupation. Gentlemen, I want to thank you for visiting with you on the subject of pricing for dairy and dairy products. The ultimate goal of the National Farmers Organization Commodity Department Program, fair prices with master contracts. Until this goal is reached, the immediate bargaining efforts are, number one, collective bargaining, which means farmers bargaining together and farmers selling together towards the master contract, contact, contracts. The milk honing action as a device to convince processors that they have to deal with NFO production and bargain collectively with the National Farmers Organization. The marketing agency in common, this influenced by the NFO members to control the variable in the fluid market, both by absorbing unutilized production during the peak seasons as well as during the slow seasons on a bargaining basis. With all of this, it is still necessary for farmers to contract production with processors and sales groups through the National Farmers Organization bargaining efforts. This, in all, is the collective bargaining program in action for the National Farmers Organization. I thank you. U.S. Farm Report has presented Fair Prices for Dairy with Alvin Rust, head of the NFO National Dairy De Commodity Department, along with Oris Canerva and Dave Zigweed, assistants in the NFO Dairy Commodity Department. Members of the National Farmers Organization invite you to tune in again next week at the same time for more facts on agriculture and rural America, which is a gear wheel in our economy that produces the majority of our nation's new wealth. The National Farmers Organization, the organization devoting its time, efforts, and resources to the preservation of the family farm structure and private enterprise in America.